Get off my lawn! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Magic Dad's Podcast. You're on the old Cranky Man Collectibles channel. My name is Blake. I'm here with Stefan. What's up, bro? Hello, hello. How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? Dude, I love that shirt. Get, oh, you, this? We th we it's think, so good. What do you think about this? Uh, it's it, it's honestly rad. I really like it. <laughs> okay, so uh, we were at the State Fair, and they have this, this like, it's a local uh, tie-dye artist. And okay. there's just tie-dye everywhere. Every Everything that you can think of, uh, they've got it in tie-dye. And I was looking at the two X's, and I was like, I got to get a shirt. I got to get okay. a shirt, and I'm going through them. And every time I came past this bad boy right here, I was like, I hate that shirt. I hate it so much. <laughs> you know, like every every tie dye is unique. Yeah. Like even the ones that are made in the same way, like each one is a little bit different. Sure. Like this color is saturated a little bit more. There's a little bit more purple in this one, pink in this one, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. This one was one of a kind. There was no other shirts in the batch that looked like this one. And every yeah. time I went past it, I was like, I hate that shirt, not that one. And 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 I kept looking and I was being indecisive. I couldn't figure out which one I want. And then each time I looked at it, it grew on me a little bit more and then a little bit more, uh -huh. a little bit more. And then finally uh -huh. I was like, yeah, that's the one. I'm getting that one. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't regret it at all. This shirt is rad. It's very cool. It, it it's like a it's like two tie-dye shirts in one. I'm wearing yeah. I'm wearing a bright under color, like a bright colored undershirt, and then I've got a jacket over the top. I, I was like, I thought suspenders. I, <laughs> Like uh, the, yeah, the shirt you, is... you know what this shirt is effectively? <laughs> it's the Carly Major Faithless Looting. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Where you're like, I hate this. It's so bad. And the more you look at it, you're just like, you know what, actually? You know what, actually? I love it. I I think this is the best this is the best version of a tie-dye shirt ever. Oh man. I, I do then, I do love this shirt though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else I love? Um Canadian Highlander. I do love Canadian Highlander. So First try. today for for this episode of the Magic Dads podcast, we're going to give you an overview of what Canadian Highlander is. Oh yeah. So yeah, we haven't really had this episode. We before. we have not had this discussion. So up until this point, um we have mostly talked about Canadian Highlander. And it is always just assumed that if you're watching this podcast, you already know what Canadian Highlander is. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you ha if you don't know what Canadian Highlander is, this is the episode for you because we are going to talk to you all about it. Give you the basics. Yeah. We're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about why we think it's the best uh, constructed format of all time. We're going to talk about why we think you should come play Canadian Highlander with us. And at the end of this episode, we are going to have a giveaway. Can I show them? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We're gonna so, we're gonna give one of these bad boys away. Up a little bit to your right a little bit. There it is. This is the Lawn Lander playmat. We're gonna give one of these bad boys away at the end of this episode. I, I paid full price for this. You'll have to stick around till the end if you want to find out how to enter into that giveaway. So yes, sir. Stefan, what is Canadian Highlander? That's an excellent question. So um Canadian Highlander at its at its heart, at its core, um, is a vintage format. So there's no banned cards outside of like um, any of the stuff that's banned in vintage. It shares the vintage ban list. Yep. So right? conspiracies, uh, dexterity cards like Falling Star and Chaos yep. Orb, uh, yep. cards cards that are racially sensitive. Yep. And, and the uncards. Yeah, the uncards, silver border yeah. stuff. All of all of that cannot be played in Canadian. Right, no share is odd. Yeah, sorry. Importantly, yeah, that's sort of the only like black bordered card that's banned. That's none of those other things. Weirdly, um, and then so effectively that it, it's a vintage format. It is right? a vintage it has, format. It, it yes. has those. So what um, what is this? What is different from Canadian Highlander and actual vintage? That is the big difference is the deck construction requirements and restrictions. Okay. Um, Wherein the minimum deck size is a hundred cards, okay. like Commander, except yes. unlike Commander, you can have more than a hundred cards. The yep. minimum is just a hundred. Yep, gotta have uh, at least a hundred cards. Have to have a singleton. 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 Yeah. Only one copy, unless the card instructs you otherwise. So you can have nine copies of Nazgul. You can have seven copies of Seven Dwarves, um, and you don't have a sideboard. There's no sideboard. There's no wish boards. There's no companions. Um, you can have companions in your deck, just not 
at, at the at the beck and call outside. Right. The game. You can put Alluris in your deck, but it has to be in your deck. I encourage you to. Cards very good. Yeah. Um, and then like and other then, cards, like wish cards don't work because there is no sideboard. There is no right. outside of the game. Yeah, everything everything in the game is encapsulated in the game. So you're telling me that I can have um, Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall, Time Vaults, Moxin. I can have all those cards in my deck. You can have them in in some decks, <laughs> not, in, <laughs> not in one deck. Um, the, oh. the big difference here, and I think you're leading into me, is that while there are no banned cards, there are some cards that are considered super powerful. Or, or a degenerate in some ways that have a point value and yes. you can have up to 10 points of cards in your deck. So a uh, big deck building restriction for Canadian Highlander, the biggest deck building restriction for Canadian Highlander is the points list. Yeah. Uh, I will put a link to the points list down in the description of this video, yeah. but there there are like, I don't know, it's about 30 pointed cards. Yeah. And they, it's less than a modern bad yeah, list. They range in value from one point to seven points. Yeah, you don't go high, higher than seven. And you can have any combination of those as long as it does not exceed 10 points. Correct. You can play a Canadian Highlander deck with zero points in it. You can do that. Yeah, there, there are some really good successful you decks. Can play, you can play one, three, five, up to 10. Yeah. You cannot exceed 10. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, like having it, it's not necessary to play 10. You're not required to play the 10. No, no. Um, That's how the power level is metered, though. Yeah. There, there, there is a there is a council, a group of uh, five. I is it five? Five, 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 five individuals that that vote on points mm -hmm. changes, yeah. and once or twice a year, the community uh, gets together and mm -hmm. discusses possible points changes, and then the council votes on those points changes about once it's or twice fantastic. a year. Fantastic. So that's it's how so the format cool. is managed. There's not banned cards. Uh, so you don't ever have to worry about you know your 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 special you know flagship card getting banned out of the right. format. That is not a yeah. thing that happens in Canadian Highlander. Now, Never. if you're playing with some you know cracked card, it's possible that it might get a point value assigned to it, uh, but it's not going to get banned. No, and and we've seen some cards come in and out of the points list, um, and the 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 so the reason that it's called canadian highlander is that the council is in yes. victoria british columbia in canada yep. this is a uh, community created format it is created by um, a group of people from victoria canada yeah which is where loading ready run is centered if yep. you're familiar with i'll the also that. link the loading ready yeah. run channel down in the description <laughs> of the video so you might be hearing this and you might think stefan blake I am familiar with a hundred card singleton format. I play it now. It's called Commander, and yep. to that I would say, correct. That is a hundred card singleton format. Yes. The gameplay of the two formats are vastly different. Vastly different. So Canadian Highlander is heads up. So you play one v one. Yeah. You don't play in a pod. You play with one other player. Yep. And the it's best the, of three. It's the best of three, and the starting life totals are twenty life points. Yes. So what would you say that this is more akin to then? Um, the gameplay. The the gameplay for Canadian Highlander to me feels like limited. It feels like like yes. a like a cube draft. If you've ever gone on MTGO and played Vintage Cube, Canadian yeah. Highlander games feel a lot like that. Exactly. You're playing the best of the best cards. Yes. But you don't have access to all of them all the time. Right. Yeah. And because it's a hundred card singleton, you can put a bunch of really good non pointed cards in your deck, mm -hmm. but you're you might not see all of them. You might not right. see any of them. Yep. You might see just a, a certain number of them and you you get so much diversity in gameplay and mm -hmm. how game and, and how games yeah. develop and how play develops. Yeah. So if you're if you if you play Commander and you know you've got access to Demonic Tutor and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, Tainted Pact and mm -hmm. uh, you know all of these other tutor effects, Vampire Tutor, Mystical Tutor, all of this stuff, mm -hmm. and you got Soul Rings and and all of this. Like that's like thirty points. Most command yeah. most commander decks are between twenty and thirty points. Like if you were to say take your commander deck, your medium power commander deck, and just be like, this is my Canadian Highlander deck now. Eh, you're gonna have to take a little bit of a closer look at it because a yeah. lot of those medium power commander decks are actually way way higher in power level than yeah. your typical Canadian Highlander deck. A precon is and, probably yeah a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, if, if that's something that you wanted to do, you would definitely have to look at the points list and, and you know, tone down the power level, mm -hmm. you know, quite a bit. Um, but the, the caveat for that is, is that you're, you're playing with one other player. So you don't have to worry yeah. about beating three other players. And the consistency is way, way down. And you know you you kind of touched on that a little bit. The you know yeah. the, the consistency of this is way way down. So, mm -hmm. like um, I find that like curving out creatures and having interaction it, like you would do if you were playing limited is is usually a game winning combination for a game of Canadian high. Yeah, you can also play a a, a combo deck. Yeah, there's plenty of viable combos. Yeah. like yeah. tons of them. Um, uh, you know, there's this card that's banned in Commander that you can't play. Uh, it's called Flash. Uh, yeah, that's you a, can play that in Canadian Highlander. <laughs> it's five points, and but you can play it. It's worth all of them. It is worth all yeah. five points. Yeah, you you get that deck is absolutely very good. You can also play Golos. It's it can't yeah. be your Commander, but you can put it in your deck, and it is still very good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one of the big things that I like about Canadian Highlander over Commander also is that. You never have to have a rule zero discussion with your opponent. Mm -hmm. You both know what what the game plan is. It's to fight each other and win. There's no yeah and win. You're trying and, to win, and, and that spirit of competitiveness is super easy to lean into. There's yeah. no burn in period. You don't know where, where you don't know what the pot is going to be like. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, some of my favorite cards are absolutely playable and impactful. Thought seize, lightning bolt, faithful saluting. Mm -hmm. These are cards that are all very good in in constructed yep. unless you're playing commander yep <laughs> lightning bolt and commander not great let's let's talk about um a couple of like the archetypes so if you're a person okay, who sure. likes to play an aggro deck mm -hmm. what are some aggro decks that are options for canadian oh Highlander? my gosh okay um so goblins mono there there are a couple different variations of goblins it's okay. very good um there is a white weenie deck that is mm -hmm. very good it's sort of a death and taxes ish but it's sort of more lower more low to the ground mm -hmm. uh, Rule Monsters is very good. Yes. Um, You're playing uh, that deck right now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I can attest. It's very good. Um, let's see what else. We've got uh, the medium decks. So these are these are decks that sort of mm -hmm. fit into the three and four mana as their top end. And they're generally one one color deck. So medium red, medium green, medium white, medium mm -hmm. black. Yep. Um, there is the Golgari Aggro deck, which is uh, co colloquially called Black Mold. It was created by Alex Stacey yep. out of Live Ready Run. The deck is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's just um, like a green black aggro deck. Like it's a bunch it's of so it's a bunch good. of creatures that are undercosted. So you know mm -hmm. your four fours for two, your two twos for one, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. So you got you got burn. You got oh yeah uh, that yeah you know death and taxes. Uh, like you said, medium red, medium white. Um, goblins mm, okay yeah. so what are some like like mid-rangey maybe blue control style decks like if i if i yeah. like to if i like to resolve a ragavan and then back it up with a counter spell uh what is a deck that will appeal to me um so there's a deck called blue moon that's a red blue deck that plays a uh, a very tempo-y control game where you're going to lean into Blood Moon style effects, yep. controlling the board, resolving Ragavan, resolving a Merc Tide. It actually plays a lot similarly to the to the modern Merc Tide decks. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, it you're just casting, wants to go along. You're casting Ponder, Brainstorm, Preordain, uh, yep. you know, Counterspell, Days. Uh, you're oh, yeah. looking to you're looking to like stick a threat and protect it, or you're looking mm -hmm. to like out tempo your opponent, like control their resources and just try to like win in whatever way is convenient to you. Oh yeah. Um, also akin to that, there's Jeskai, Jeskai, Jeskai Midrange oh, yeah. and Jeskai Pyromancer. Very similar game plans. Uh, yeah. There's also the four color um, like Om Omnath decks where yeah. it's it's four color, no black. And, and basically, you get to play all of the best mid-range cards from those colors. So you've got all the best removal spells from white. You got um, all the best, like, you know, lightning bolts and ragavans and unholy heats and stuff. You get that from red. You got fury. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from green, you get stuff like Tarmogoyf. You get Minskin Boo. You get Renin Six. Oko. Uh, Oko. Playable in this form yeah. format. And then, and then from blue, you get the cantrips. You get the counter magic. Like, yeah. it's just kind of all of the best cards from those colors. Yeah. shoved into one deck it, it's very good yeah and, and again you get to play all the the band stuff yep put it on your deck yep 
And then, you know, uh, if you're someone who likes to play mid-range decks, there's so many mid-range decks. Oh my gosh. If you can think of a two-color or three-color combination, you can build a solid mid-range deck out of those. Literally so, any of those. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's Naya, which is like this turbo initiative deck. Yes. Very, very popular. Um, the, let's see, two, yeah, two, two quarterlies ago, it yeah. was a Naya initiative mirror, mirror in the final. You yeah. know, and this, most of these decks rely on Moxin. So Mox Sapphire, Mox Pearl, Mox Ruby, they rely on Moxin to try to yeah. turbo out, turbo out these three and four mana creatures. Pointed cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah, Moxin are pointed three. cards. Yeah. They're three points each. Yeah. Um, and then, Speaking of mid range, there's like Jun Lands. There's yeah. uh, there's Jeskai mid range. There's uh -huh. Abzan mid range, which also sort of has a Lands and Reanimator package. Zoe's yeah. been on that recently. Um, basically, like you said, any combination of colors right. can, just can kind of shove the good cards style. into a deck and and go to town. Yeah. If okay. you have a pet card, put it in. Put it in. So um, yeah. Crackling Drake is sick. Uh, <laughs> uh, how about combo decks? What kind of combo decks do we have available in Canadian uh, Highlander? Okay, there are a billion different combo decks. Um, off the top of my head, uh, if you like taking in infinite turns, there is a Time Walk deck that that uses Spellseeker and Time Walk. Uh -huh. uh, time, both of those cards are pointed, but the card the deck is very consistent and very good. Yep, our friend Luke Sheely can tell you all about this deck. It is Spicy. it is like a, a a silver bullet creature deck. So think. Yeah. Think, think Birthing Pod from Old Modern. Mm. Similar strategy to yeah. that. You have all of these creatures that each have this, you know, you know, unique ability, and then you use effects that that tutor for creatures, put creatures into play, or play creatures quickly to mm. to try to like you know interact with your opponent in that way. Uh, mm. And then you also have this 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 combo finish, which is Spell Seeker plus Time Walk plus Ephemerate plus you know you know whatever Eternal yeah. Witness. And it, it's you just, so resilient. You just take infinite turns. Yeah, and it doesn't need it. It it's does so not need it. No, it, it plays it just go. Yeah, it plays great like a mid range deck. No um, problems. So there, that is just a big one into the format right yeah. now for us locally. I had mentioned, also, I had mentioned Flash, Flash Hulk. Yeah, Flash which is, Hulk. If, if you've played Commander in the past before that got banned, you know the deck well. It does basically the same thing, and it's hyper consistent now. Yeah, um, it, it also yeah, it also just picked up uh, the new the new Sam. So you get the, the, the Sam, yeah. the Sam and the cat thing with the carrion feeder, and the you get a grand abolisher, so your opponent can't stop you. And uh, oops, oops, I win. Yeah, it, and notably in this format, there is no color identity or color restrictions on deck. So right, slamming in a card that you have no business putting in your deck, like you just can't cast it, is yep. totally okay if you never mm -hmm. plan on casting it. Um, like I, I have seen I have seen flash decks that don't have white in them with Samwise Gamgee because they're never planning on casting that card. Like they have right that and the what is it the uh, Grand Abolisher? Yeah, Grand Abolisher, the the Shusher, uh, kind of <laughs> like they, they never plan on casting these cards. Nope. They're in the deck to to be combo pieces yep. for the combo. Yeah, you get your Protean Hulk. Protean Hulk goes away. Okay, I win. Yeah. Um, there's Alluren, which is sort of a creature combo. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, of it's kind of similar to Seeker Walk, though. You're just looking yeah. to set up this this you know creature based combo where yeah. where you just basically end the game on the spot. Yes, uh, uh, Kiki Pod. That's an, yeah, that's yeah. sort of so the, Kiki Pod. If you were if you were a fan of Kiki Pod in Modern or Splinter Twin in Modern, Kiki Pod might be a deck for you. So this is a teamer. It's usually either teamer or five colors. It's four or five, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, it's it's again, it's another mid rangey creature deck that that is just looking to you know kind of grind out your opponent, interact with them with creatures, and then get to a point yeah. where you just make infinite creatures and kill them. And there's like a dozen dozen different combinations of ways to do that. Pat Bernasco. Yeah. In, in Victoria sort of like pioneered the, the current construction of the deck. And right, if you follow this man at all, he will regularly post board states of the deck and ask you how to win from the board state. Where it's like two <laughs> creatures on board, uh, like limited amount of mana, and he'll just go, how do you win? And uh, if you've ever enjoyed like those magic puzzles of how to win, it's so, like, I love it. And the man is a genius with the deck. He's Perfect. played it so much. Amazing. Um, and then 
there's a so we're we're seeing a sort of a resurgence now of the uh, that Tolarian Academy um, uh, paradox. Uh, oh, are we seeing a resurgence paradox. of that? Yeah, we we've been t- sort of talking. I've been talking to some people about it with the One Ring coming back into play. Uh, oh, where okay, yeah. so the, paradox, the paradox Academy, Academy is is you know you got your paradox, you got you got your Tolarian Academy to make a bunch of mana. You play all these mana rocks, and you just get to untap yeah. a bunch of times, and then keep drawing cards off the top of your a, deck. And- another card banned in, in Commander. Yeah, um, yeah, where yeah, if if there is a card that you fell in love with because of Commander and it got banned, uh, you can play you can play it in Canadian Highlander. Yeah, it's not points either. No. Um, T- Tolarian Academy is one point, and it is the only real necessary piece in mm. the deck to function well. Mm. Everything else is totally free. There are, if you're a person that loves Storm, there are several different mm. Storm decks that you can play. There's like um, the you know the the Ten Fins deck where you're part Reanimator, part Storm, and then there's like um, uh, Underworld Breach variants, mm. and then there's also you know like Black Lotus variants. There's 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 any number of different storm decks. Uh, yeah. uh, what other combo decks are there? There's just a, there is literally a ton of combo decks that you can play. Yeah, th- there are th- uh, a shocking number of them. So we talked about storm, um, reanim like dedicated reanimator. Oh yeah, decks. dedicated reanimator decks. Yeah. So yeah. if you just want to put an Arkan of Cruelty or uh, you know a, a Gristle Brand or an Atraxa into play really really early, you can do that really really consistently mm. in Canadian Highlander. Trust me, I've done it. Why have you done it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so some, go ahead. Uh, oh, uh, and then like there are just fringe decks that sort of yeah, operate on the yes. outskirts of everything. Yes, and, and and I sort of love that. There's always people trying new things. Yes. Um, the, never be literally afraid. when yeah. you can play any card from Magic. Any card, yeah. nothing, nothing is out of the question. There are so many possibilities; are limitless. So, okay, tell me some of the decks that you have created in the past. In the past, uh, year play. Boggles, Boggles, yep. Yeah. Uh, Grixis Rogues, mm-hmm. um, Enigmatic Incarnation. That was wild. I like uh, I'm, that. I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a serial brewer. So, uh, literally, you can make whatever you want. You forgot Jeskai Dragons. Oh yeah, I did forget about Jeskai Dragons. Yeah, <laughs> you put actual factual Shivan Dragon in that. Deck yeah, and, killed and I, I killed it. someone with it at the last quarterly. It was so fun. Uh, yeah. So, dude, Canadian Highlander has so many different archetypes that you could play. Like, literally, you could just if you're in love with a card, yeah. you can play it in Canadian Highlander, and and it's good. So we yeah. talked about aggro. We talked about mid range. We talked about control. We talked about combo. Uh, sure. You know, I I think. Uh, that is, is it, we covered quite a few of them. I'm sure there's yeah. ones that we missed, but um, now now we want to talk about why you, the viewer, should, should come play Canadian Highlander with us. So uh, we have a quarterly Canadian Highlander tournament. In fact, mm-hmm. there's one happening this Saturday, August 19th, 2023, at 10 a.m. at Game Castle in Ankeny. Yes. The buy-in is $25. First prize is a tropical island. And a qualification for the yearly Canadian Highlander Championship, which will take place in in December. Yeah. The prize is a sword. An actual An sword. An actual sword. Yeah, that is custom made, has the Lawn Lander logo yeah, on it. It says Lawn Lander 2023 champion right down the blade. It is it is amazing. Better than a trophy. Uh, way better than a trophy, dude. Way better and than a trophy. Speaking of our group, like the bragging rights of this are astronomical. Yes. Like if you win this, if I win this, I will literally wear it around with me every time I'm inside the store. The sword yeah. will be on my on on my yeah. person. Like, it, like so. Yeah. There's the the actual competitive environment that we've established and that we've been offered from the, our local store from Game Castle from from OCM sponsoring us and 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 sort of allowing us to have a play box or, or, or a sandbox to play in um it, it's allowed our community to grow really nicely where where they kind of let us take the reins and and shift directions where whatever yeah. the the, peop- the players are feeling we mm-hmm. kind of move to that that direction Mm -hmm. yeah so um benefits to playing in our play group you know how we talked about you know black lotus and moxin and stuff like Mm -hmm. this and and you're just seeing you're just seeing dollar signs in front of your eyes oh my god proxies how how many though all of them no but how many per deck 
all of them. You can have a hundred percent. You can have a hundred cards proxy. What about in a tournament? Yes. yes. <laughs> so you're telling me I could show up to a tournament with a hundred proxies, pay twenty five dollars, and play for a tropical island? Yes, you can do that. You that can is you can win that tournament, win the tropical island, get the qualification, and then go play in the yearly championship with your hundred card proxy deck, win that, and take home the sword. Yeah. All the proxies that you could ever want. If you and, want and to build five different decks and all five decks are proxies, you can do that. Yeah, we have local players who do that to test regularly. Yes. Because they want to... This is also sort of a format, and like kind of going back to the format, where you can either dedicate yourself to one deck, really like tune into it, make it what you play, get focused on it, or if you have a diverse collection, like Blake and I do, where you have just a lot of singleton cards... You can kind of build anything. Yeah. You don't need a playset of everything. You just build right. it. Right. A playset a play set for Canadian Highlander is one card. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got to worry about any of that. And, like, there's no Ruzier conversations. There's nope. no weirdness. You always know what you're doing. Nope. Um, I will also say, so we talked about some of the, some of the decks that are played locally, like um sean plays goblins routinely uh luke has been on time walk we have some personalities in our community don't we yes there are this people there are people their entire identity is this deck yes and i and, love it and there's so much diversity in deck yeah and, like i genuinely feel like i know players by their decks mm -hmm. too yeah so while i have all this these relationships with players my relationship is also with their deck. Yes. Like, the uh, Schaefer playing uh, the the Pattern Rector deck. Sandy B. Has always been, like, that's sort of his baby. Like, yes. he loves that. And I also love that deck. And we sort of, like, grew this kinship through the mm -hmm. deck. That's wild, um, man. And you're, like, a classic control player, and so you have always been looking for, like, these control avenues, and you and other control players have sort of bonded over You, you know what? Like, like I hear, I have heard so many people, you know, say it's like, oh, I'm so sick of playing against Rakdos Scam in Modern. No. Oh, I'm so sick of playing against Cephal at Breakfast in, in, in Legacy. Like, you show up to Canadian Highlander, you play five rounds... You're going to play against five different decks. I swear, because for some reason, none of us want to step on each other's toes. So we all play different decks. Sure, you're going to show up to one of the one of the quarterlies where a lot of people come in from out of town. And there's mm -hmm. going to be two copies of this deck and two copies of that deck. And you sure. might play against the same deck twice, but it, <laughs> we all play something different. Yeah, yeah, we've. If you show up to you know your to your weekly modern, your weekly Canadian high, or sorry, your weekly commander, your weekly modern, your weekly whatever, and you play against the same decks every time, you're sick of seeing those same decks. Like, yeah. come play Canadian Highlander because we all play different decks. <laughs> and in addition to that, even if you even in that match, you're going to play best of three, right? You're going to have vastly different games. Yeah. Every game of that match, hundred percent. So you're getting different gameplay in the same match, different matchups every match and our as a community i feel like we have this sort of open discussion about decks that we're considering that cards that we're considering and that again ever like nobody wants to step on anybody's toes but also it's a respect thing it's like yeah this is the deck that you've <laughs> that you've sort of cultivated and while i may play it at some point i have an understanding that this is sort of your baby <laughs> um and Kind of going off of that, we have a Discord. Yeah, I don't know that we've we ever have, talked about. We this have before. a very, very active Discord. I can, I can put a link to our Discord down in the description yeah. of this video as well. It's, it's probably, very active. Not even <laughs> it, to say it's active is sort of a underselling because it. We talk about everything in the Discord. We kind of just post yeah. everything. Yeah, we doing. don't just talk about Canadian Highlander. No, <laughs> yeah, we talk about whatever. But it's, it's, it's super active. We're all, you know, real close friends with each other. We've Most of us have known each other for a really long time. And, and it just feels like one big giant family. I just want just to give everybody a hug and then, you know, get more family members. Yeah, in it, that's it. Let's yeah, we bring more family inside. If you show up to play with us, you're immediately in. Yeah. Like there's no burn in period. If you're playing our format with us, congratulations. You're part yes. of the group. Um, and if you jump in the discord... 
we're going to start talking to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're going to start talking to you about decks. And I know that there are people that are that are in the Discord who don't actively play right now, who have like talked to me, like at like at length about Canadian Highlighter and things they want to do and things they want to play. And I'm just like, yes, I will talk to you for 45 minutes about Canadian Highlighter. <laughs> Absolutely. I I have no problem doing that. Um, uh, so, and, so amazing. Yeah, it, I, I really enjoy the community we've built. This community is wonderful. Okay. All right. That's that's enough. Now, let's, let's talk about this giveaway. Show me that play mat one more time. Okay. So Here this is the Lawn Lander playmat. So this is the OCM Canadian Highlander playmat. You see, you see Cranky, he's right there. He says, get off my lawn. It's amazing. It, All right. It reminds me of Calvin and Ob's art. Yes, 100%. So if you would like to be the proud owner of one of these playmats, what I need you to do is comment in the comment section of this video what your favorite pet card that you would put in a Canadian Highlander deck is. Mm. Okay. You also have to be subscribed to the channel. So yes. subscribe to the channel and comment down below what your favorite pet card that you would put in a Canadian Highlander deck is. This giveaway is for US residents only and the drawing will be done on September 1st. Yep. Also like the video if you feel that you've enjoyed it. You should definitely also We like We enjoy that too. What is a pet card that you would include in a deck, Blake? Crackling Drake. Cards insane. <laughs> Cards so good. Uh, How about you? Um, uh, lately I've been thinking about Raven's Crime a lot. Oh, buddy, <laughs> I don't like it when you make me discard my cards. Eh, it's, you get to choose. No, I don't want okay. to. Okay. No, no, <laughs> stop it. Oh my gosh. Hey, thanks for watching the Magic Dads podcast. There is a link to our Patreon campaign down in the description of this video. You can go there, yeah. check out all of our extra content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what your favorite pet card is so that you can win this sick play mat. And we just want to remind you that we're proud, we're of, proud you. of you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next thanks one. Bye. Love you. Bye.